Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. And we will begin with topical questions. These will last for up to 15 minutes, and then we will move to deal on with questions that, will, that appear on the oral question list. Question number seven has been withdrawn. I call Alex Easton. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, Minister, I recently went to visit uh, a business in my constituency called 3M, who raised the issue of ever uh, rising energy costs. Could I ask the Minister, um, what is the business regulator doing to uh, try and help businesses who are struggling with energy costs? I call the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Well, I'm not surprised uh, that Mr. Easton has been asked about the uh, price of energy, particularly for our large energy users, because it's a, a feature that comes up uh, more and more uh, in uh, Northern Ireland, and it's one of the reasons why I asked the utility regulator uh, to look at this very issue. The utility regulator brought forward uh, a paper earlier in this year where he pointed out the fact that we uh, indeed were one of the highest uh, uh, cost areas for electricity uh, in Western Europe. Uh, this of course causes me grave concerns, particularly for the manufacturing uh, sector, and therefore I have asked him uh, to do more work on that issue uh, and to come back to me uh, hopefully uh, by October. That's the time I asked him to come back to me by, so I'm hopeful that that will come to me in the near future. I call Alex Eason. Um, the, the timetable for this paper to come forward, um, do, you, do you believe that there will be uh, actions that will come forward from that, that paper which could help businesses? Well, I very much hope that that is the case because the regulator, and indeed I met the board uh, of the utility regulator uh, a few months ago, they know where the focus is uh, for me as Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. They know that it's uh, certainly uh, not a good selling point for us to have that level of electricity cost, particularly for the large energy users. Uh, and therefore, I hope that the paper that comes back to me, and I very much do hope that the paper comes back to me in a timely fashion, um, that it will come back with actions and costings, which I think is very important as well, Mr. Deputy Speaker. There's no point in bringing forward uh, posi pos possible actions if uh, there are no costings associated uh, with those actions, because everybody in the Assembly, of course, will want to know what the cost implications are if we take certain actions. So I look forward to the paper and hope that it does have uh, positive actions uh, in it for all of Northern Ireland in terms of energy costs, but in particular uh, in relation to the large energy users. I call Jim Wells. The Minister will be aware of the good news from Kilkeel about the opening of the metal web factory on the old Cunningham Stone site. And she'll also know that the aircraft factory in the town continues to do well and indeed has uh, recently completed the construction of the new Lufthansa first class seat. Uh, will the Minister agree with me that that emphasises the importance of manufacturing in the Northern Ireland economy? And whilst there's been concentration in the construction trade, which accept that the bolstering of manufacturing is the crucial way in which Northern Ireland will get out of its pres present economic situation. I thank the member for his question, and I do very much welcome uh, the opening of that new factory uh, and uh, indeed join with him in congratulating staff there and indeed uh, BE Aerospace as well, which he has referred to. Uh, I do want to pay tribute to the CEO of BE Aerospace, who has moved on now, uh, and uh, his fabulous work that he did there in Kilkeel, and we wish him well uh, for his new position. But the member is absolutely right that manufacturing uh, is key to the economy of Northern Ireland and particularly manufacturing exports. And I was pleased to see that uh, manufacturing exports went up 4% in quarter two uh, of this year. Uh, that certainly will help us in relation to our programme for government targets. As he will know, uh, we have a 20% increase target in there generally. And indeed, to new and emerging markets, uh, we have a, a huge target of 60% increase. So we very much welcome the fact that manufacturing exports seems to be going in the right direction. I call Jim Wells. Thank the Minister for, for her comments. Um, one of the things that came out of the opening of the metal web factory in Kilkeel was quite a worrying indication that there was a, a, a shortage of skilled craftsmen in that particular field, which in this case is moulding uh, aluminium 
uh, for various uh, manufacturing processes. Will she liaise with the De Department, of Enterprise, uh, Department of Employment and Learning to ensure that as the economy does come out of recession, that we don't go back to the situation of, say, six or seven years ago, where there were areas of the economy which were being constricted by the fact that there were insufficient skilled apprentices and skilled craftsmen coming through the system? I thank the member for those comments and will certainly uh, raise them with uh, the Minister for Employment and Learning. I mean, one of the key elements of having a devolved administration uh, here is to make sure that we do have the joined up government and that we do have the appropriate skills for the job opportunities uh, that present themselves. And that's why we have the Assured Skills uh, Scheme, which has been worked up between uh, the Minister for Employment and Learning and myself. It has worked very well uh, with regards to inward investment, insofar as we can find out what the inward investor needs uh, in terms of skills, and then we can uh, manufacture, for want of a better word, uh, the appropriate skills for him uh, or her indeed. But uh, I think it's interesting that you have mentioned an Indigenous company which has clearly indicated to you that there's a need for uh, skills in this particular area, and I'm sure that the Minister for Employment and Learning will want to take that on board, particularly uh, with his excellent college in that region, to make sure that those are available. I call Maeve McLaughlin. Um, the Minister has indicated that there has been 13,870 jobs promoted throughout this term of the programme for government. Um, can the Minister indicate to this House how many uh, of those jobs promoted were actual new jobs created? Well, certainly in terms of the jobs fund, I have the uh, figures in my head uh, in respect of the jobs fund, and uh, in terms of the number of jobs promoted, I think it's over uh, 7,000, uh, and created is over 3,600. I don't have the foreign direct investment figures uh, in my head at present, but of course I'm happy to write to the uh, member with the appropriate statistics. Um, uh, I just don't have them uh, in my head at present. I call Maeve McLaughlin. I thank the Minister for that and look forward to the detail. Um, can I ask, given uh, particularly INI's um, acceptance uh, a number of months back, that they will begin now to publish the, uh, the statistics around the actual jobs created? Do we have a timeline for when we are likely to see uh, that, that detail in the public domain? I'm very much on record as welcoming uh, Invest Northern Ireland's uh, commitment to provide us with jobs created as proposed to jobs promoted. And the member will know uh, the difficulty in terms of jobs promoted because uh, the number that are given to us by the firm uh, depends on the amount of money they get in terms of selective financial assistance and what have you. And then they will promote those jobs over a period of time, whereas uh, Assembly members, uh, understandably from their own constituencies, will want to know how many actual jobs are created in one particular year. So we will have those on a year-to-year -year basis now. As I say, the Jobs Fund uh, have already got those statistics on a rolling basis, uh, and I'm sure we'll have the foreign direct investment statistics uh, at the end of this financial year as well in terms of the created jobs. I call Mervyn Storey. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister what, uh, what progress her department is making with the Department of regional development in relation to seeing changes in the regulations and in the legislation regarding the erection of uh, brown signs, particularly to ensure that we have very soon uh, tourist directional signs for the dark hedges in uh, my constituency. And uh, I want to say to the member that he is uh, very persistent uh, in his uh, campaign to have brown signs uh, for the dark edges, and understandably so. And indeed, many colleagues uh, right across the chamber will want to have brown signs in their constituencies, pointing out particular uh, uh, parts of interest uh, and indeed those recreational areas as well. Uh, I do have to say to the member I have been disappointed with the progress on uh, this policy. Uh, this is a policy which... Uh, in theory, is shared between the Tourist Board and the Department of Regional Development's Road Service. However, Road Service have the final say uh, in terms of whether a, a, a brown sign is erected or not. Uh, the policy, unfortunately, uh, still remains with DRD, and we haven't got the up-to-date policy in place as yet. I call Mervyn Storey. Thank you, and thank the Minister for, for that reply. However, I share her disappointment, and can I also declare an interest as a member of the Dark Hedges Preservation Trust 
Uh, will the Minister, along with me, ensure that as far as the uh, DRD Minister is concerned and his department, that every effort is made to have the policy changed so that the many hundreds of people who on a regular basis visit the dark hedges will actually be signposted uh, to what I believe is the most idyllic tree line that we have in Northern Ireland. Indeed, it is the fifth most visited tree line in Europe. And uh, I'm sure he's glad to share that statistic with the House uh, uh, today. Uh, can I say to the member, uh, I had hoped that we would have had a policy by now in relation to brown signs that would have recognised uh, the specific circumstances of Northern Ireland, would have been more flexible. Uh, I understand from road service that they do not want a proliferation of brown signs uh, around Northern Ireland. Uh, when one visits Europe, mainland Europe, you can see why that is the case, because when you go to France or Germany and there's signs everywhere and it's very confusing, uh, I, I think you will agree for motorists. But I think that a little bit of flexibility in relation to brown signs would be uh, wholeheartedly welcomed uh, by people who are trying to find tourist attractions. And I do hope uh, that we are able to come up with a, a policy uh, which is flexible, which is workable, uh, but which, above all, works for all of our tourists to come to Northern Ireland. I call Rosaline McCorley. Can I ask the Minister, please, if she could outline her priorities for island-wide business development in advance of Michael Noonan's engagement with the CBI on Friday? Um, I am not aware of uh, the event uh, on Friday, which the member refers to. Uh, however, uh, I will say this. We work with Intertrade Ireland, obviously, to increase the trade between both parts of uh, this island, between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, because in many instances for small and medium-sized businesses, uh, the other jurisdiction uh, will be the first port of call for their uh, goods, uh, and therefore Intertrade Ireland will continue to work with those small and medium-sized enterprises to make sure that they will have a uh, good support network, uh, have programmes available uh, to them that they can work with, uh, and indeed to make the most uh, out of their next door neighbour uh, and to be able to work very well with them. I call Rosaline McCorley. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer. Can I ask the Minister uh, how does she propose to protect against further marginalisation of our local economy? Well, I don't accept that we are being marginalised. Indeed, uh, just last week I was in South Africa with a trade mission of 27 companies from across uh, Northern Ireland. We were very warmly welcomed. It was a, uh, the focus of the trade mission was in particular for the manufacturing and heavy manufacturing uh, industry from uh, particularly the Mid-Ulster and West Tyrone area. It was a very good uh, trade mission, and I indeed uh, believe that there will be very good orders out of it. So I don't accept we're a marginalised economy at all. We're part of the United Kingdom economy, part of a very stable economy, and I think we will continue to grow as the UK economy continues to grow. I call Declan Nicolier. Good last, can call you. Uh, could the Minister tell us what level of marketing support her department has provided to the Explorer Centre in Port of Ferry? I, I do welcome the uh, question from the member from Strangford, no, sorry, West Tyrone, uh, in relation to the explorers. Uh, I, I, I know you, you would welcome them down there, uh, Mr. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the uh, department, and uh, in particular uh, the tourist board, has been very supportive of the explorers aquarium. As you will know, uh, uh, it is run by the local council. The local council have taken an economic decision uh, not to continue uh, with Explorers. I know that will be a, of disappointment to the visitors that go to Explorers. I amongst them, it has to be said. And, uh, but that is a financial decision that the council has taken, uh, and I think it has been voted through the council, and that is where it sits. I call Declan McAleer. Does the, does the Minister accept that the Explorers Centre plays a very important role in not only attracting visitors to the area, but also in supporting the local economy? Well, I'm sure all of those points was, uh, were taken into account uh, by the local council when they decided uh, to close the aquarium. Uh, it is, of course, regrettable that the 
uh, decision has been taken, but I can only assume that they took it for economic reasons and that the aquarium was not uh, able to, in quotes, wash its face anymore. And I do note uh, that one of the local representatives for Strangford has referred to explorers as a fancy play things for anoraks uh, uh, and a constant drain on ratepayers' money. Uh, and now when the local, when the local representative uh, is saying that, uh, about explorers, uh, I have to say it does leave a lot of questions to be answered. And that ends the period of topical questions, and we now move on to.